you a little bit about a little a little bit more about me and why me to share this information. So Colin was born because I actually couldn't get a job. If I rewind 15 years ago, I struggled to get a job after I left university and it really impacted on my mental health. I'd spend days on end mindlessly applying to jobs I didn't even know if I wanted. And it was by chance that I actually fell into a career in media. I had no idea that this industry would be something I'd enjoy or would be good at, nor did I know that small companies could offer such amazing employment opportunities. But since then, I've actually been um, what some might call a serial quitter. I've had quite high standards in terms of company culture. I, I know quite strongly my values and I want to work in places with like-minded people where I can make a difference to the success of the business. Per on a personal level, I feel really satisfied in knowing that I can make an impact. Um, before setting up Pollen, the shoe was actually on the other foot and I was the one in a small business making the hiring decisions. So I also understand the challenges that businesses go through to find exceptional people and know typically how decision making actually happens. Unfortunately, around 18 months ago, I found myself back in a position where I was looking for a job, um, but this time it wasn't of choice. And it was a really tough experience to go through. At the time I must have applied to over a hundred jobs, got go completely ghosted by most of those jobs that I applied to, never received any feedback. And to be honest, the whole process was, was quite demoralizing um, and demotivating. But that gave me the push that I needed to go and set up my own company and share the mistakes that I made when I was looking for a job and insights from the inside to help people find their right path and have a more positive experience when they're doing so. Um, so in the session today, I'm actually not going to list out all of the different industries that exist. What's the point? There are so many jobs that don't even exist yet. I am also not going to tell you how to write a great CV. So apologies if you thought that that's what this session was going to be about. You could probably ask now that with the rise of AI, you could probably just ask chat GPT to write a great CV for you. Um, but what I will do is my best to make this session personal, interactive and relevant. This is very much a safe space. You can get involved as little or as much as you would like, but obviously we would love it if you did get involved to make the session even better. So hopefully that all sounds okay. The theme that I can, I can see here is that actually the focus isn't necessarily about what you want to do, but more so how work can fit into your own life and your own needs and your own interests and your your own personal desires I guess so that's actually a lot about what we're going to talk about in this session because I think it's so easy to get fixated especially with a lot of the people that we work with on the what whereas actually finding a job is is so much more than that because it's a big chunk of your life um so on the next slide if that's working so I guess in the past, society expects people to follow a, a set career path. If you want to pursue a certain career, you typically follow a certain educational process. You might get an internship at a well-known company in that industry, perhaps go on to secure a formal training scheme with a larger company. But the reality is that the world is changing. The truth is, truth is that many people don't just stick in one job until they retire anymore. There are also lots of things that happen in life that change our plans and change our directory. Transitioning into something else entirely is possible and also quite mentally healthy. But I can appreciate 
also that it's also something that can be quite overwhelming especially if you don't know what you want to do or it's been a while since you are um you, you have been in in the workplace um so yeah I, I sort of want to delve um deeper into this concept of um how you establish um what it is that you want to do or actually rather removing that concept entirely um before I go on to that I want to touch upon my own experience and one that I see so commonly with our community so I, I like to call this um the loop of despair and unfortunately this is representative of the current jobs market um, and I'll, I'll sort of reference this with some of the uh, experiences that I have had as well. So when I was looking for a job 18 months ago, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Um, and I know that there's a lot of people that can resonate with this. If you have been applying to any jobs, um, you might feel the same way. I've been in a situation where if I saw a job, I'd apply to it. It seems very easy on job boards. In fact, on LinkedIn, it's called easy apply. Um, but the truth is, having been on the other side, it's also very easy to reject. Um, because it appears so easy, this is what everyone else is doing. So therefore, employers or recruiters have very little way to know which applications are relevant and which aren't. It's also quite alarmingly addictive. These A lot of these job sports platforms have been designed this way. It's quite easy to be lured in with the click of a button. You can automatically update your CV and just apply to as many as you want without a great deal of effort. But the result is that you end up pouring hours and hours into mindlessly applying to jobs, even if you know that you don't want them. Um, when I was doing this, like I, I would I would be in a situation quite late in the evening and scrolling on my phone and being like, well, maybe I'll, I'll just apply to one more. I'll just apply to one more. But the problem with that is that I was not really taking any time to look after myself. And I got sucked into that trap of just continually, continuously applying to more jobs. Um, and then the more jobs that you apply to, you almost get into a process of having less relevancy that like there were certainly times where I received phone calls from recruiters being like, oh, um, I've seen that you've applied to this job. I'm like, I don't remember applying to this job. And then do you want to go for like, I'm going to put you through to the next stage. Like it's a face to face interview. And then I'd be in a face to face interview. And they'd ask me that question as they all do. Well, why did you apply? And I'm sat there thinking. I don't know. I don't even know if I want the job. Um, so I lost complete direction. And as that happens with the loss of direction, I just then apply to more. Um, but but yeah, because I had no idea, I then resort to applying to irrelevant jobs and feel even more confused about what I wanted to do. And so that cycle continued. So what I want to talk about is like how to almost get out of that cycle. Um, it's, it's really hard. Um, so yeah, I, I and I and I think that there are steps that you can hopefully take to get out of that loop. I guess in the context of jobs, I um, I like to think about things a little bit more holistically. So removing that notion of what for a second i know many people um get get to a stage in their career and they're either burnt out or they face some kind of personal crisis and and maybe the, there's some synergies there with being a carer as well they they had been successful they climbed the corporate ladder got to where they thought they should be, but they weren't happy. And I guess they didn't really know why they were doing it. Someone um, I was actually talking to recently found themselves redundant with no idea what they were gonna do. Um, so with 
they actually decided to spend a month not even thinking about what they would do. They spent that money on getting full-time childcare, joining a yoga studio, getting coaching, and just generally looking after their own well-being, which is the first time they had done that in 20 years. By the end of that month, they had total clarity on what was next and how to get there. And in all honesty, I wish I had done this so myself rather than going through that unhealthy cycle of despair. Um, so this kind of holistic model starts with the why. Um, I'm not sure if anybody ha has ever heard um, a talk by Simon Sinek, a TED talk called It All Starts With The Why. And it's a very famous talk in the marketing world, which was my background before setting up Pollen. Um, but it applies on on so many other levels. Um, and I recommend that you, you do listen to it if you haven't already. Um, and whilst the theory is very much aimed at brands, the same theory can be applied when you're looking for a job. Because we are, in essence, our own brands. We are the main characters in our own story. And work is a huge part of our lives. I believe that figuring out your why is the nucleus of job satisfaction. It's what keeps you motivated. It's what influences our goals. It affects productivity and so many other things. So what are your values? What do you care about? How do you want to make an impact? Um, I would, and I would love to hear more, whilst this isn't directly where I can, um, I can help. I would just really love to hear more about your own personal why. Um, and I know that this, this is hard for some people, but just take a couple of minutes to think about your core values. And people have already started touching upon this um, in the previous question, but what energizes you? What are you passionate about? What footprint do you want to leave on the world? Oh, no pressure at all if you're not sure um, but you could just, yeah, give it a go, see how it feels. And again, if anybody wants to put, put their thoughts in the chat or speak up, would love to hear. As I sort of mentioned earlier in terms of the road that I got to, I guess my, um, my why has been very much on helping people um but equally i know the i know the environments where i like where i thrive i know that i love making an impact i like to see that i can have a first hand difference in whether that's helping people or helping an organization that's really what keeps me me motivated so i guess thinking about like your why and like what what is important to you and your values like once you've thought about that the next stage is is thinking about your who and I actually spent a, a huge amount of my career feeling frustrated um I I used to think that a lot of the people I work with were idiots um but now having built a community of job seekers and having learned a great deal about behavioral science I know that's not the case they just weren't my people um and I know we can't always choose or like the people that we work with, but figuring out your who can have a massive impact on your job search, which I'll come on to later. So I guess it's it's asking that question, who do you want to share your why with? What sort of culture do you actually align with? How do you want to feel at work? Because once you've determined these things, that's going to help you to figure out how you can achieve this, how you can actually find a job that aligns with your values and find people that that actually um, show up like the people you wanna work with. Um, so again, like we'd lo love to read in the chat, anything about what kinds of people do you resonate with? Who do you get on best with? If you, in a previous job, which colleagues did you gel with the most? Are there any common threads in terms of their personalities or behaviors? Anything I guess that you really value in the people that you work with? Because 
I, I really what what I found really helpful. Um, oh, it's not. Sorry, I thought my thing had gone. Um, what I found really helpful when I've left jobs and started new jobs again is like I I already have that confidence and conviction in an interview setting and know what questions I'm going to be asking. I, I want to know about the people that I'm going to be working with. I want to know that I'm going to get along with those people. I want to know that I'm, I'm going to respect the leader of that organization and that it's the sort of culture that is inclusive for me and my needs. And having that level of conviction in an interview setting is not a negative thing. If anything, it's a great quality for an employer because they're going to know that you do have high standards and that you're probably going to be committed and that you are invested in the opportunity. So thinking about those things in advance can help you to ascertain not only what is the right sort of environment for me, but also like I've, I, I can make this a two way conversation rather than being passive in an interview setting. Just have a look at the chat. Supportive, nice, friendly people. <laughs> yeah, I resonate with that. Can't cope with bullies. But these are parameters. These are parameters for your job search. And I think it's really helpful to know this stuff in advance. So I'm now going to go on to the how, like how, like once you've figured out these things, how you can actually go about finding a job that aligns with your why and your who and how to do that in a really effective way. So just to start with, there's some quite alarming stats, I guess, um, that are representative of the current jobs market. Um, but I am going to share some insights from the employer's side and explain how you can actually use these stats to your advantage. So the first one is that 70 to 80% of jobs aren't actually advertised. The second one is that... Um, Sorry, my this Zoom just keeps freezing for me. The second one is that the average cost of filling a vacancy for a company is actually over £6,000. And the third one is that recru recruiters on average look at CVs for 7.4 seconds. So none of these things feel particularly helpful when you're looking for a job, but I'm going to share some tips with you about actually how we can use these to our advantage. So first of all, with seven, with 70 to 80% of jobs aren't advertised, the main reason why they aren't advertised is that actually a lot of jobs are filled through networking. It definitely doesn't feel fair that that's the case, but considering it from the employer side, when the average cost of hiring is over 6K, the cost of hiring the wrong person is actually over 18,000. So from an employer's perspective, it feels like a much safer bet if they hire someone they know or who comes referred. So to navigate that, actually networking yourself can be extremely powerful. LinkedIn, I don't know if anybody's got a LinkedIn account or they've ever been on that platform. It can be a very powerful place to build your network and actually start to raise your profile within certain industries or organizations. Certainly, there's a lot of companies or um, recruiters that would look at your LinkedIn profile before they even looked at your CV. Again, whether that's right or wrong, unfortunately, that is just the way of the world. So I would really recommend that you get a LinkedIn account if you don't already and um, get your profile up to date, fill in all of the relevant sections and use that as a way where you can start to sell yourself and build up your network. 
it is also I would I'm, I'm gonna just share a couple of anecdotal success stories from from doing this I had massive social media anxiety before I actually set up my business. I I didn't ever actually go on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. Um, I did have a LinkedIn account, but I basically just used it. I just updated it whenever I got a new job. I uh, The network that I have built up since I set up my company it, it is quite phenomenal, to be honest. Like I've probably met about 150 people over the last 12 months that have just supported me in some way. And 99% of people that I have met have genuinely been really lovely, positive, supportive. Um, it, some of those people that I have met have gone on to be um, my customers. Some of them have gone on to be my investors. And I know some people in our community, the people they have connected with on LinkedIn have ended up becoming their employers. I would also really recommend, like there, there's loads of things that you can attend on LinkedIn. There's often audio events. Um, you can source other local events on that platform. Um, you can join communities. It's a really great way to meet other people that either might be in the same position as you or can offer you support. There's lots of mentoring communities that exist. Um, we have our own mentoring um, platform for our community of job seekers, but I know that there's lots of others out, out there. So doing some research to almost find, like find a network, meet people. It could also just be as simple as digging out a, digging out an old contact, an ex-colleague that you've worked with before, asking to arrange a coffee, having those face-to-face -face interactions and meeting with people actually makes the whole process of finding a job much more enjoyable. Um, and, as, and as I said, a lot of the people that I have met have genuinely been really nice and supportive. And I know a lot of people that are looking for jobs that have ended up, yeah, fi finding much better success just from speaking to people in all different industries. And um, even, even if they aren't necessarily hiring at the moment, um, they might be able to pass you on to somebody they know who is or, yeah, help you on that path. It can be a bit daunting, but it, it can be really worth it. And we've seen a lot of success within our community from people doing that. One of the other things to think about is whilst this is it's expensive for companies to hire people, you could help them. Um, and effectively, what I mean by that is if you find a company rather than the role, because a lot of um, a lot of companies, if they don't even promote the fact that they're hiring, a lot of them will go straight to a recruitment company to solve the solve their hiring um, needs. So when I was hiring in my previous company, we were about, um, so when I joined, there was about 14 people. By the time I left, there was about 50 people and, and I was responsible for, for hiring in that stage of growth. We... Um, we never had we never had anybody directly approach us for jobs, but we we were always hiring. We just didn't have time to promote the fact that we were hiring. We didn't have the time to update our website. We we didn't we we rarely did job postings. Um, we 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 more often than not, if we needed to hire, we would just reach out to a recruiter and get them to do it for us. And that would be expensive. So if we had people that had directly approached us and said, really interested in what your company is doing, I'm look I'm looking for a role, or even it might just be I, I'm looking to chat to somebody about how to get into this particular industry. I mean, I would fall off my chair because nobody ever did it. Uh, and if that person was exactly what we needed at that moment in time, they would have saved us six thousand pounds. Like that, that they would have been doing us a massive favor. But so few people do this out of fear of rejection or an assumption that companies are always promoting roles. 
that actually you can you can get much further ahead this way by showing a genuine interest in that company and um, sort of putting yourself out there and saving them time. Um, what I would also say with this is this is very common in small companies. Often SMEs don't even have a talent team. They might not even have a HR function. So if if you can help to save them time by proactively mess messaging them, whether that's sending them an email or connecting somebody at that company on LinkedIn, it, you're much more likely to meet a human and um, have a more relaxed interview style uh, interview process than going to a very large company that have very rigid processes and established processes already in place. W one of the things to think about is obviously thinking about the companies you want to work for is potentially easier said than done. Um, so what I what I really recommend doing is almost compiling a list. So once you've thought about the sort of company that you would want to work for and the type of people that you would want to work for, could there's obvious practical requirements as well, like the area that you'd want to work for. Do you have do you want to work predominantly remotely or do you want to um, have a hybrid setup, work in the office? There's there's all of these sorts of fact, like it's almost criteria that you want to you want to set lay down when you're trying to do this direct outreach. We um like for I, I can give you an example. If I was looking for a job right now, I would I have a particular interest in the social impact space. So I would be looking for um companies that are are social impact companies. I would value remote working. I would love to work for a small company. Um, I would like to work in London um, and all sorts of other factors. I particularly would love to work with a female leader. So that might stimulate a search for me of, OK, well, what companies have been shortlisted for awards with, with female leaders or what are the most interesting small social impact businesses? Maybe they're startups or maybe they are small charities or something like that to help stimulate stimulate um, that search of the criteria that I'm really looking for. And then once I've compiled that list, I would then go and email, I would go on their company websites and look for indications that they might be hiring. Because sometimes they might post jobs that are in other roles, but they might not necessarily um, have all of their roles up to date. And typically that could be an indicator that they are growing companies if they are, um, yeah, if they've, if they've posted in the past about particular jobs. I would also, something that's really important to me as an inclusive culture is knowing that that company values bringing in people from all different backgrounds. So I would look for clues of this. I would look, do they look like they, they value diversity in their businesses? When I was in a um, recruitment position, if people contacted us saying, oh, I love the company, um, really interested in what you're doing and they reached out to us and said you know if any other job if any jobs do come up like would love to be considered or would just love to have a chat with you to find out more about working in that industry it just so rarely happened that I would always do that and I know it's not all not everybody would go to that effort but showing that you've gone and done a bit of independent research and showing that you're really invested in their in their company because there's a values alignment or you care about their mission or you care about the the leadership in that company they they often really love that and it shows that you're proactive it shows that you're really invested in them and that you would if you were to come and join that company that you would really care um so i really recommend doing that because even if it doesn't automatically get you a job it could those conversations could still lead to somewhere going back to the net like the value of networking Actually, you could just have a conversation with them, even if they're not hiring right now, they might be hiring in the future or they might be connected with another company that is or they know somebody that they can pass on your details to. So there can be a lot of value to having those those conversations. 
the other final thing that I um I was going to come on to is about how recruiters only spend 7.4 seconds looking at a CV. So obviously this is a massively hard one to navigate and I can't profess to know how to write a perfect CV, but really all a CV is there for is for you to sell yourself. Um, much like your LinkedIn profile, um, if you if you are thinking about going and, and getting your LinkedIn profile up to date, um, which often a lot of recruiters do default to now. Um, what I would say with with CVs is do not underestimate your transferable skills. The key things that most employers are looking for, especially with the rise of technology, is actually actually softer skills. Things like communication, proactivity, being able to take initiative, building relationships, uh, working with a team, and so on. Um, and actually, those skills can be acquired in many different places. So use these to your advantage and shout about them. Um, champion yourself and don't be afraid to really showcase those strengths um, whether that is if you did end up having a conversation if you're in an interview setting or if you are thinking about updating your CV those things can really help to, to stand out um, what I would say because that's not really our area of expertise finding mentors and getting to people's second opinions can be really really valuable it's very easy when you're like drafting cvs and writing applications like you get quite stuck in the weeds with it uh, certainly that's how i felt so if you can almost find um and I think I mentioned earlier that there's plenty of mentoring platforms that do exist that can help you to get a bit of more personalized one-to-one -one guidance. Um, if if you can just find those people to just get a second opinion, and again, that just put it just shows that oh, I, you know, I'm ready. I'm looking for a job, and even if they're not like hiring right now, you could just use that conversation to say oh, I'm applying for this job or I'm updating my CV. Would really love it if you took, an, uh, took, took another look at this and then they might take a look out at it to help you and then see the sort of interest that you have and what it is that you're looking for and say, oh, actually, I, I know this company. Would you like to be connected? And the more conversations that you have, like the more opportunities that that could lead to. So that's sort of the key piece of advice I, I would say is, just keep up those communication lines, speak to as many people as you can, start to build up your network. And actually you might find that it's a much more enjoyable process than sort of staying staying in front of a computer screen and just applying to lots of different things and being stuck in that, in that uh, cycle of despair.